Hello everyone, welcome back to the walkthrough for the game Other Side. We are in the fourth week, and before we go and um, do any missions, let's have quickly look at the codex, because I promised you guys to quickly have a look at it this time. Okay, so, we have some new enemies to look at. The Plague Prophet. The Plague Prophet is quicker and stronger than the Plague Butcher. You will focus the closest daughter. If two daughters are the same distance away, you will focus the one with less HP. Fate and the plague brought its share of profit. I could hear their cries of the end of the world from my cell. What do they think now that I have truly ended their world? They wander somber souls and obey my will like dogs. The child. Curse Witch. The Curse Witch is quicker and stronger than the Curse Therapist. It will use its delayed attack or flee and shoot immediately, but the attacks do damage in an area around the target. It focuses the furthest enemy in the timeline. So the curse which will attack the daughter that's um, at the end of the timeline. The plague doctors opened up to new cults, desperately trying to find a cure for the epidemic that was ravaging the country. Did the treatment become worse than the disease? On every door of the city, um, is um, is stole ic, esotic, how do you say that word? A stoltic painted acronym appeared, while sinister murmurs of dark incarnations flourished in the alleys. The child. So basically, the um, uh, plague brought a lot of. Um, the plague made it people desperate, so people were desperately trying to find a cure. So they were doing um, many different types of treatment, try to treat the disease, but uh, everything just became worse and worse. And obviously the plague ravaged the city and many people have perished. Uh, and the child had brought these uh, people back as enemies. So the child, I'm guessing the child is a very powerful being who's able to resurrect um, fallen, um, who's able to resurrect fallen uh, enemies or allies. So I'm guessing the child is just like a powerful being that is able to um, do this because the child is able to give life to the maid who has obviously died. Ravenger. The Ravenger is an evolution of the scavenger. It is a deadlier, swifter, swifter, and more resistant. It can act. It can react to a daughter taking damage with additional attacks. The first Ravenger to spawn will aim for the furthest daughter, and all other Ravengers will aim for that target until there are no Ravengers left on the map. So Ravengers are dangerous because they focus on one daughter, and look how creepy they are. I could have sworn the mask was there, a jester's mask with a vile smile standing a few inches from my face. As I rose out of my torpor, the vision disappeared, but my body was racked with scratches and sagulent wounds. The child. So the Ravenger has very sharp claws and attack your daughters. It also reacts to daughter taking damage with a special skill called Revenge Attack. It's very dangerous enemy. Reaper. The Reaper is a deadlier version of the Hunter. It also reacts with a forceful attack if a daughter approaches it. It will always choose the closest target and the one with the most health. So the Reaper targets the uh, daughter with the most amount of health. The Reaper also has a skill called Reflex, which makes it that your daughter, if your daughter tries to get out of melee range, Reflex will proc and attack your daughter. Now Reflex is a very dangerous skill because even if your daughter moves, um, even if your daughter moves and still moves within melee range of the Reaper, the Reaper will still use Reflex. So it doesn't matter how your daughter moves, um, Reflex will proc. However, there are ways around it. Reflex cannot um, intercept. Reflex doesn't work for teleporting attacks or teleporting skills such as Lightning Strike or sidestep. That's another really good um, use of sidestep, is that it can escape the reflex skill from reapers. 
I will explain more about it later. I, I can show you guys an example. I hate this place. Um, okay. I hate this place. I hate the one who had locked me in here. This injustice haunted my death, destructive anger. I wanted to flee, to escape, to no longer be a prisoner of this weathered body, deprived of lust and muscle. I wanted to tear this world apart just as it tore me apart. Now I can see. So I'm guessing the child created these um, terrifying entities. Guilt bearer. Guilt bearers are corrupted daughters. They are very dangerous and they are end game tier enemies. If you see them, um, you better be very careful. The guilt bearer can delay daughter's attacks and can take a lot of damage before being destroyed. She will focus the closest daughter while prioritizing any shield bearers. So she will attack shield bearers. Aren't you ashamed? Don't you realize what you have done? Painslinger. The painslinger carries two black pistols and can speed up herself and her allies, as well as rain down pain in an area. Her damage will focus the closest daughter while prioritizing any soul slingers. Each day, he devours us a little more. Each day, we feast on his banquet. We, each day, we feast at his banquet. Um, Painslinger are like a corrupted soul slingers. They are much more dangerous than guilt bearers because they are able to speed up allies, which means they can manipulate the timeline, causing allies to act before you think that they will act. So they can boost up allies up to 50 initiative units. Additionally, their ability to boost, which is called corrupted haste, has huge range. So they can boost allies even from opposite sides of the map. And because they can boost allies up to 50 initiative units, they can push slow moving units up the timeline, which can then attack your daughter. Take care of these enemy as soon as possible. You should prioritize pain slingers over guilt bearers. Okay, let's have a look at the maid. The maid activates different reaction and interruptions depending on what the daughter do. And she then targets the closest daughter with her thighs. Finally, she ends her turn by launching a delayed action depending on her selected reaction. As she loses health, she unlocks new actions, increasing the number of combo she can execute. To win, the daughter will have to adjust to the maid's interruption and reactions. This orphan lost her parents, swept away by the plague, and became a servant to the deacon, humming the rusty notes from a music box. The young maid pulled out a lullaby, a fragile flame in an ocean of darkness, especially for the miserable and contagious child. Trapped in the cellar of the deacon, a few words survived time and ages. Do not fear, I will be here. Your pain is failing away. Sorry, your pain is falling away. The young maid, broken, beaten, and defiled by her horrible master, died in the arms of this unloved child, sealing the fate of reality, the mother. So, I'm thinking what happened is, obviously there's a deep story to the maid. So the maid is someone who has lost her parents and um, who obviously worked for the deacon, so became a servant to the deacon. The deacon, being a terrible, terrible person, um, found that the maid is helping the child. So I'm guessing the maid got locked up inside of the child with the child. Because the child is contagious and has a plague, uh, the child spread the plague to her and then she died. And the child then became really, really angry. So um, that's why the mother says sealing the fate of reality. This means um, the child became really angry and he unleashed all his power in the real world, um, creating all these monsters, you know, these terrifying beasts um, upon reality or upon the world. The child also gave the maid back her life uh, and obviously we just defeated her. So the maid is not a difficult uh, boss, but you have to understand her interruption skills. Now, as I said before, you cannot interrupt an interruption skill. This means 
you are still able to attack the maid using ranged skills. If um, she uses a ranged interruption skill, you can use interruption round. Uh, you can use intercepting rounds. Um, hold on a second. Is there anything else here? No. So before I I'll, I'll go into that. So for example, Clemens has intercepting round or interrupting rounds, interruption rounds, or um, I, call it, I call it interruption rounds, but it's intercepting round. If Clemens uses intercepting round and the maid has, um, I think, forbidden love, which is a ranged interception skill, it cannot intercept intercepting rounds because intercepting round is an interception skill. You cannot intercept an interception skill. Um, obviously, the game developed made it that way. Otherwise, everybody can intercept everybody, and then it becomes very confusing which interception skill goes first. Um, yeah. So, so what happened? Basically, what happened to the maid is that the maid got uh, locked away with the child because um, because the, the deacon um, the deacon was a horrible person, and the deacon indirectly caused the death of the maid, and because the child, uh, because the maid was the, one of the few people that was nice to the child, that's why he became very, very angry as she died. So as it says, a fragile flame in an ocean of darkness. So yeah, that's the gist of the story. I don't know the exact details, but anyway, um, so hold on. Uh, how do you, okay, how do you get, okay, um, is there anything else that we have on here? If there's nothing else, yeah, there's nothing else here. Um, you guys can read this in more detail if you want. Okay, so let's go back to our daughter, and let's look at Peace. So Peace is a scythe dancer, she's almost like a remnant of the maid, so... The maid uses the scythe as well, um, and she has even similar skill. Mo, which is very similar to the reaping. Um, so Mo deals 938 damage in a zone. So Mo is able to hit multiple targets, up to three targets. Uh, it can hit enemies in a zone. Means uh, th one target and two adjacent targets to that. So the scythe dancer is very unique because she can take turns quickly, and she also has she is also able to take turns first in the beginning of the mission. She's a character that can take turns um, quicker than all other daughters, but most importantly, she can take turns before everybody else in the beginning of the mission. So she has, uh, a, ne uh, she has a faster starting, uh, a less starting delay in the beginning of the mission. I hope that makes sense. So she's unique in two ways. First, she has the ability to do um, area of effect damage, and she has a very deadly area of effect um, skill called Deadly Dance. Second, she has the ability to uh, steal armor as well as shred armor. So shredding armor or reducing enemy armor is different to stealing armor. Okay, so let's go through her skills, uh, which will make more sense. So Mo is just an attack that does a lot of damage. Because it can hit multiple targets, it, it can be quite effective if you can group enemies together. It's her standard attack costing 30 AP. The stealing, the stealing does um, 488 damage and shred 30 armor to the target, has a range of three. So the stealing is a semi-ranged attack that not only does a decent amount of damage, it also sheds 30 armor, so it reduces enemy armor by 30. Now, I wish they reduced the um, size of her scythe, because it's covering half of the screen, which is uh, really annoying. Um, I'm kind of disappointed they still haven't fixed that. Um, the reaping. The reaping steals 85 armor and do 60 damage 12 times. Now. Um, this is very different because it steals armor. It means it will reduce enemy armor by 85 and increase the Scythe Dancer armor by 85. Now, the armor she gains from uh, stealing armor lasts 
for the entire mission. It does not last for the game, but it lasts for the entire mission. However, she can only steal armor. She can only steal 85 maximum armor, um, assuming that the enemy has over 85 armor. If the enemy has less than 85 armor, she will steal the amount. She will um, steal the amount of armor that the enemy has. For example, if the enemy has 50 armor, she will only be able to steal 50 armor. She cannot steal 85 armor. If enemy has zero armor, she will steal zero armor as well. Now, if the enemy uses armor buffing skills, for example, if the enemy has zero armor, and then they use armor buffing skill, which give them one thousand armor. Then the scythe dancer can steal. Um, the scythe dancer is still able to steal 85 armor from the 1,000 armor. So the armor that enemy has, um, they must have armor in order for her to steal us. But it doesn't matter how they got the armor, whether they naturally have this amount of armor or the armor is from an armor buffing skill. Okay, and it does 60 damage 12 times. Remember that. Deadly Dance, Deadly Dance deals uh, 175 damage and steals 30 armor each time. Um, uh, each 15 initiative units up to th three times. So this is an AOE attack. It hits uh, two tiles away. So it's a big AOE attack. But most, important, most importantly, it happens at 15, 30, and 45 initiative. This attack does a huge amount of damage and it is able to steal 30 armor for each unit that the scythe dancer hit each time so for example if there are three units each having 90 armor so three enemy units she's hitting each have 90 armor each time she uses deadly dance assuming the enemies are in range each time she will steal three times 30 armor so each time she will steal 90 armor. And because she attacks three times, she is able to steal 90 times three, which is 270 armor from each of the um, enemy. So she's able to steal all 90 armor from the enemy units. This means she can gain armor very quickly. So the Scythe Dancer is able to gain armor very quickly by stealing armors from the armor from the enemy. And she's very good in um, Missions that take a long time, for example, certain rescue and survival missions that may take quite a long time. And there are a lot of enemies trying to overwhelm you. You can use this skill by stealing armor, making the scythe dancer stronger and um, making the enemy weaker. If we equip an initiative delay memory, this skill is very powerful. Dancer binding is an interruption skill. It interrupts the first action of an enemy and deals up to 1018 damage. Now, Dancer Binding is a very interesting skill because it interrupts the first action of the enemy. Now, this action could be a movement action, could be an attack on an ally, or could be an attack on self. It means it could be an attack on the Scythe Dancer or her allies. Unlike Intercepting Round, which can only intercept attacks on an ally, this skill is able to intercept an attack on the Scythe Dancer herself. So it's a very powerful interruption skill. Now, it only has a range of 7, unlike Intercepting Round, which has a range of 10. But it doesn't really matter because of how strong this is. Now, this skill can also interrupt enemy movement. So if enemy is trying to move, it is possible to interrupt um, their movement as well. So because it interrupts the first action of the enemy, um, just be aware, sometimes it doesn't interrupt, sometimes it will interrupt the movement action of the enemy rather than their attack. Uh, it doesn't work with buffs, and I don't know about, uh, yeah, I don't think it works with buff. So um, for example, infested or infected, which can buff allies, it doesn't interrupt this, I don't think but it is a very powerful interruption skill. Now, in terms of memories you put on each skill, for more, I will just increase the damage of this skill um, very simply. Um, it's better to increase the damage percentage-wise rather than um, increasing a numerical amount because it does 938 damage. Um, I don't 
do not use armor reduction memories on the scythe dancer because uh, she has the ability to steal armor. If you use armor reduction uh, memories, you can reduce enemy armor. S this means you're less likely to steal armor from the scythe dancer using the scythe dancer. Um, the stealing now with the stealing, I will use a, um, either increase the damage or use an initiative delay memory, which I don't have now. The reaping is something very simple. You want to increase the skill by a numerical amount because it doesn't do a lot of damage to begin with. Increasing by a percentage will be less optimal. You want to increase this by a numerical amount. For example, increase the skill, damage of a skill by 100. Deadly Dance, um, this one I would use initiative delay memories because every time you hit enemies, if you can delay them, it makes this skill really, really strong. So what happens is not only are you able to damage enemies, you're also able to steal their armor, increasing the Scythe Dancer's armor and delay them at the same time. With an initiative delay memory, this skill becomes really, really powerful. Now, Dancer Binding, I would use um, uh, in target immobilization skill, target immobilizing memory, because just in case I interrupt an enemy's movement, I can then immobilize them. So enemies trying to move, they get interrupted by dancer binding, they're unable to move. This means they're not able to attack me. Now, most enemies in this game are melee units, so they have to get into your melee range to attack you. If you interrupt their movement with Dancer Binding and you immobilize, you immobilize them, they're not able to move, so they can't attack you. Now, there are units that can bypass this, such as Hope Breakers, which has Sidestep, and also Reapers, which have Giant Leap. So they can bypass target immobilizing uh, memories, but a lot of units or a lot of enemies cannot. Um, with Mo, you can also increase the critical chance of this skill. Like, increase the critical chance by uh, 15%. That's also okay. I mean, she only has a critical chance. Um, you also can increase this by percentage amount. The stealing, I will use an initiative delay memory on this. Um, and this, I will use an initiative delay memory just to make her very powerful. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the Scythe Dancer. Now let's look at our Soul Slinger. Okay, so the Soul Slinger gets two unique skills at a level 10. Spirit Burst or Detonating Shot. Spirit Burst boosts initiative by 10, dodge by plus 20 for 10, and armor by plus 30 for 10 duration for all eyes all allies in the area has a range of five. This is basically like an area of effect initiative boosting skill. This is awesome because you can boost up multiple allies up the timeline. Now the additional dodge and armor doesn't really help because the dodge is not that useful and the armor only lasts for 10 initiative units, but it can boost up multiple allies by 10 initiative units. And if you attach a memory with um, additional buffs such as armor damage you can buff up multiple allies damage and armor so really really useful skill now um because i have spirit haste already it's probably not necessary to use spirit burst but spirit burst and spirit haste works very differently spirit haste has a range of eight um and spirit burst only has a range of five now Spirit Burst, you must have a line of sight to your ally. If you do not have line of sight to your ally, you cannot use Spirit Burst. Spirit Haste, you do not have to have line of sight to your ally. With Spirit Haste, your allies could be um, on the other side of the map, blocked by an obstacle, you can still use Spirit Haste. No problem. Um, so, the other skill is Detonating Shot. Detonating shot deals up 705 damage to a target and 705 damage in a zone has a range of 6. This skill is deadly. This skill does point damage and AOE damage at the same time. Now, it differs 
from protective force because protective force doesn't do point damage. Protective force only does contact damage by pushing enemies into each other or obstacles. This skill, however, cannot be free aimed. It must be locked onto a target. So in some sense, it's not as good as protected force, which can be free aimed, assuming the tower is not occupied by an ally or an enemy. Detonating shot is an awesome skill. It does a huge amount of damage. And because it's an AOE skill, it works really, really well with initiative delay memories or target immobilizing memories. I'm going to pick detonating shot. You can also increase the damage of detonating shot. Now, because I already have spirit haste, it's probably a good idea to pick detonating shot. I could also pick spirit burst. It's okay. Now with Jill, because I have protected force, it's a good idea to pick Spirit Burst. So I have an AOE attack and I have uh, an ally boosting skill. So I can boost allies. So Deadening Shot does cost 35 AP and Spirit Burst costs 30 AP. Um, something to note with Spirit Burst is that um, Spirit Burst has a range of 5, but because it's an AOE skill, it actually can reach an ally up to six tiles because of that one extra tile at the end. Now you can pick um, protective force and detonating shot so your soul slinger has two um, AOE options. Detonating shot can only be used once but protective force can be used many times um, per turn. So detonating shot can only be used once per turn but protective force can be used many times per turn provided you have enough AP. If you do pick protective force and detonating shot together, make sure to always use detonating shot first before protected force, because protective force can push enemies away and scatter them, um, making detonating shot less useful because you might not be able to hit an, um, enemies together. But I'm going to pick spirit burst because I think it's better to have an AOE option as well as a boost option to boost allies. Um, additionally, I can um, add treasure. This means I can boost up allies by 25 initiative units. So I can boost up multiple allies. I can also provide allies resistance to initiative delay um, or additional armor. I'm going to always use treasure. But later on, I may use resistance to initiative delay, so my allies can't be delayed anymore. Okay, so these are the skills and a quick overview of the Scythe Dancer. So let's get back to the missions that we are going to do. I'm going to do the ritual mission first. Uh, it's in the torture chamber, Bella and Jill. Uh, Jill has a protective force, right? Uh, I'll double check. Um, it's okay. Uh, I have detonating shot. Protective force. Protective force can do just as much damage as detonating shot. Both skills are really useful. Bella and Jill. So the threats are Ravengers and protective force is super effective against Ravengers. Same as detonating shot. But protective force is really useful because it pushes the Ravenger away. So if you push the Ravenger away and immobilize him, what more must we sacrifice before the end? Um, they are not able to move back. So basically you push them away, immobilize them. They can't get to your melee range. So they're not able to attack you. Protective force is because of super me. good against Ravengers. Okay, Jill. See, Jill has to move all the way around, but Bella, because Bella has sidestep, I'll show you how cool sidestep is. Okay. We have six Ravengers. So Ravengers are dangerous, not because of their um, claw attack, that doesn't do a lot of damage, but because of revenge attack and the fact that they take turns very quickly. So with Bella, we can use um, this. Sidestep. Boom. 
Um, we can also then All right, um, we just put Bella here. So Ravengers take turns very quickly, and they're very dangerous. Because they take turns quickly. Okay, so six Ravengers makes him very weak. They're actually very dangerous. And we are going to use Protective Force. Boom. Okay, so they're immobilized. Protective Force again. Oh. That's Ming. Okay, now this guy can't move for 35 initiative units. Exquisite. This guy can't get to me. Same as these two. Okay, so pain. okay, he's gonna use revenge attack, but it's not gonna do anything. He can't do anything because he's blocked. Well, I mean, he's immobilized, so. Okay, so. What Bella can do is lightning strike this guy. We have to teach him to stop. Sidestep across here. Boom. And move. And protect the force again. Um maybe I shouldn't have Took, took this enemy down. Maybe I should have lightning struck him, so... Okay, he's immobilized. Hmm... I need to be careful here. 17. I don't know who they're going to attack. I imagine they're going to go for Bella. That's what I imagine they're going to do. Um, this guy will be able to take turns after me. Okay, so we'll just take this guy out. Impressive. Alright, they're not going to be able to get me though. So Bella will do some work on this um, Lost Soul. And Joe is going to do the same thing, Protected Force. Um, look, why don't we come around here so we can use Protective Force like this a bitter victory uh seven look i need to take out this unit a bitter victory i do need to go into burst but that's probably okay how much spirit burst cost 30 can I get to Bella with Spirit Burst? I can. Yep, Spirit Burst, super, super useful. So, it's an area of effect boost skill. So, if I had another daughter here, I'll be able to boost up two daughters. And because, um, 
it's actually six range of six, even though it's a range of five because it has a um, it's it's look it is a range of uh, five, but because there's it's an area of effect, it has an extra tile similar as protective force. It actually has a range of six. It can reach up to six tiles. It's not. A, it doesn't have a range of six. Maybe that's the wrong thing to say. Will the poor one's suffering never end? All right. So. Uh, there's two enemies. So. There is an infested. Infested is really, really annoying and scary. Um, there are really some enemies that you don't want to deal with. Because, okay, they have a really strong basic attack that does a lot of damage. They also have Zone of Pain, which pushes surrounding enemies one tile, deals up to 660 damage, and delays them by 25 initiative units. So it's like slam. Enemy pushed into each other also takes additional damage. They also have Protective Darkness that g gives allies a huge amount of armor 180 armor for 80 initiative units and target acts 25 initiative units sooner that's how annoying it is they also have the ability to swap position and they have a range disruption which deals up to 140 damage reduces armor of a target by 110 what's annoying is that they delay you by 25 initiative units they can also escape uh, invade a nearby daughter by swapping position with an ally and dark illumination dark illumination is an area effect healing that heals target 500 hp and makes everyone act 25 initiative units sooner so not only are these units able to make allies move faster by increasing uh their by making them act 25 initiative units sooner on the timeline they also have a range attack that has a huge range that can delay you down the timeline. So they can delay your daughter and push allies up the timeline. So they cause unpredictable changes up the timeline and they make it they make it harder for you to know how much how the timeline is changing because they're pushing your daughters back and they're moving allies up the timeline. So they're doing opposite of what you're doing. So you're using slam to push enemies back and spirit haste to push um, allies up. They're doing the same thing by using range destruction to push your, your daughter down the timeline and making allies move fast, um, making allies move up the timeline. It's really annoying, these um, enemies. You really want to make sure you take care of these infested as soon as possible. And they are very, very dangerous if there are two of them together because they can buff each other up the timeline and they can both delay you down the timeline with ranged, ranged destruction. Additionally, they're even more dangerous when paired with pain slingers because pain slingers can continuously buff allies by up to 50 initiative units using corrupted haste. You want to take care of these guys as soon as possible. There are ways to ignore them by keeping a really long range from them, but you just want to defeat them as soon as possible. And if you see them spawning, uh, I prefer just not to deal with them. And just to finish the mission. Bye bye. A bitter victory. All right, victory. Bella's level 11 and Jill is level 10. Let her and a big 10.5. It is done. Um, what I don't know if I would do another mission. Just give me a second, guys. Um, I just need to check the time. One second.
All right. Um, okay. So I do have a little bit of time left, um, but I'm not sure I would do any of these missions. The Dark Layer, Corrupted Daughter, and Infested. Um, I don't even want to think about this. I mean, it's a hunt mission, so it's not a, that um, of a big issue. I could do this mission. The servant's bedroom. Uh, I will bring Chris. Clemens. I think Helena. And Ada, maybe. Yeah, sure. Um, and we're going to do that next time. I don't think I'll do it this time. Yeah. That's what I would do. I don't know I would do this mission. This mission looks very difficult. And this mission gives almost the same amount of Vitae, just a little bit less experience. It's okay. I don't mind. I mean, it's 750 experience for four daughters, you know. I have new memories available. Let's see what it is. Decrease target armor by 80 points. Repetition. Add an additional attack dealing 390 to base damage. This attack can't quit. Return. The target acts 15 initiative units later. Yeah, sure. We'll definitely do that. This is going to be very, very useful. Because every time I use Lightning Strike, not only I do damage, I also delay target by 15 initiative units. So that's really, really useful. Um, ideally, you want to put it on your Scythe Dancer with Deadly Dance. But I'm just going to wait for a little bit. If I get another initiative delay memory, I'm going to put it on her. And then she's going to be really, really useful. Um, look, I don't mind hunt missions. Hunt missions are actually quite easy. Because you can run away from them without a huge penalty. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. I do appreciate the view. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.